Well, the place is filled with the presence of God. Amen. You know, we know that each one of us is the beloved. God loves you so much, He's chosen you specifically to have a relationship with. You are the beloved. You are the one that He had an idea about. Yeah, you. And then He spoke you into existence so that He could share time with you, that he can spend time with you and be with you and share your life now and for eternity. So we're here to remind each other. We're here to say, yes, let me live the life that God has already planned out for me. And one of the ways that we do that is to understand the way that God has set things up to work. I want to talk today about a principle that God has taught us through the Word. That if we follow that, it makes all decisions easy. Because God not only has the plan, He not only loves you so much, but He wants to guide you day by day, step by step. I want to talk today about God's peace. To let God's peace rule in your life. Now we all know we live in a world right now where peace is hard to find. If you don't have a relationship with God through Jesus, there is no peace. There's no peace to be found. We see the world and the world is just exercising less and less peace. But we want to learn the secret. It's a secret because we don't use it, but it's there. God taught it to us. And the main text that highlights this is simply Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15, the first part of that verse. It simply says this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now the unique thing is that word, rule, in the Greek, that word, brabuo, the Greek word, is used once. Just once in the entire Bible. I think that was hard. It's one time. This direction, if you will, this Secret, God said, I'm going to put it there. This is how I want you to do it. This is how I want you to rule your life. So this word in the Greek, brabuo, means umpire. It means umpire. And it means God's peace is to act as an umpire in your life. Again, it's the only time in the whole Bible that we're given this direction. So it's very significant. God wants us to get a hold of this because this is the way he's teaching us to make decisions. Now we know if you um, are into baseball, if you like sports, you know, an umpire, baseball, right? You go to Fenway Park, my grandson who's walking in recently went to Fenway Park. And part of what's in the game is the umpires. Now if there's no umpires, nobody knows who's winning, who's losing, who's out, who's saved doesn't make any sense. There's no direction. We're the same way. We need to see what's happening and say, this is safe, right? If it's something of God, if it's direction from God, you want that in your heart. If it's not of God, you've got to tell it to get out. Like an umpire in a game, peace in your heart is the umpire. You can't just let anybody slide in, steal a piece of your heart, if you will. You are the one we know that has dominion. You are the one that God gave authority to. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion on the earth. <coughs> we are the ones that make the call. But we have to go with the peace, and then that decision we take a step in that direction. Staying in perfect peace. It's the antidote 
to all things. The fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, and peace. Those are the big ones. But you really truly can't have love, you can't experience joy if you're not in peace. It's the peace that covers. It's the peace that gives you the idea of you're in the presence of the glory. It's peace. One of my favorite scriptures for peace, just a great scripture, anytime you're going through something, you want to get in this place so that you can stop making decisions, is Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah, talking about God, talking to God, said, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you on you, because you trust in you. <sighs> That's an antidote, it's medicine for the heart. It gets us in this whole idea of making decisions in this realm of peace. So it's not enough to know that we have authority, it's not enough to know we have this power to command to call things from the heavenly realm into our lives. It's not enough we can take, tell things to get out. We have to know the decisions to make in our lives. And then we can operate in our authority. So the first step is getting into this realm of peace, this perfect peace. And then we can decide what decisions. Again, it's not our decisions. We're seeking God's decision and not ours. It will bring perfect peace. God's decision for you it is peaceful. It gives peace. The world's decision, your own decision, may sound good, may make sense. People have may have told you this is the way to go. This is you know some good stuff behind it. But you have to go with peace in your heart. Now I know this because I spent half of my life proving this that you can't do it on your own, and I made a lot of bad decisions, many bad decisions. So I can say that I'm here, not because I just read it in the Word, but God gave me revelation on this, but he also led me through a time where he taught me this, that great job, you tried, but you're off. That's why your life is a mess. I want to tell you a little bit about what God taught me to learn this. He taught me how to make decisions, what it is to have peace, and then Decide on that piece. Go and make decisions. Some of you may know this testimony to some degree, and I'm going to spare you from all the gruesome details, but uh, I'm going to give you a little highlights. So, in December, I'm sorry, September 28th, 2012, I had this encounter with the Lord, and uh, I was staying at my mother's house in a room by myself. Now, what got me to this place, um, Sandra and I had been separated for the second time. For this time, probably about 14 months at this point, and I was away from the kids, and I had traveled down to Texas. I was away in Texas, and there was no communication. We were totally, so we had almost been divorced in 2007, so we were getting good at this. We thought, you know what? We can make this happen. And so we did everything we could to destroy the marriage, but you know, I came to this point thinking, Lord, I'm away from my wife, which I really didn't want to be, but everything was just coming apart in my life. So we were separated, I was separated from the kids. I was in the military, but I had lost my top secret security clearance because of financial problems we had because we were separated and we had the short sale of the house and all this. So I came before the Lord this night, just a mess, right? Just totally, finally surrendered. And I came into this room that I was staying in and I just fell on the floor and I said, Lord, I don't care what it is. Join the circus, or whatever, I don't care what it is. Just please show me your will for my life. And the Lord answered me now in a way that he had never answered me before. And I was laying there still and it was an audible voice, powerful, it's a small room, but it sounded like it was you know, in a theater, and the Lord asked, actually asked me, do you really want to know my will? He said to me, and I said, yes, Lord. He said, it's right there. I 
had the Bible on my lap. Not to the left, not to the right, but right there. That's it. That's what he said. But the way he said it wasn't any loving, you know, no harps playing, no beautiful. It was, he was pretty stern because he knew that I knew, but I wasn't listening. And like any other kid, you know, sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't listen. But he's like, do you really? But, you know, it changed my life this day. I started to see the Word of God differently. I saw the Word of God as exactly what God wanted to say. He didn't want me to go here to find out what someone else thought about it. He didn't want me to change anything. God was telling me, I meant what I said. I said what I meant. And it's right there. You don't have to look it up in the Hebrew, the Greek, the homebrew, you know, any kind of other brew. You just read it, right? So I started to read the Word of God for the first time, like this, truly believing. And of course, the Lord, first thing he brought me to was about marriage, that he hated the rules, that he, you know, here's what the man's supposed to do. And I just started to, to listen and listen. And I, the Lord gave me peace. I don't want you to get the rules. I don't want this. He gave me peace. I said, okay. All right. I'm believing. Your word says this. I'm believing this. So the Lord said, awesome. That's great. Now, why don't you put your ring on? And I was like, oh, okay. I put the ring on. The first person I told was my, my beautiful Brittany. It's always been my prayer warrior by my side whenever I had to, ever since she was a little kid. She'd talk to me as if she was, you know, more mature than me. <laughs> but she, you know, she listened to my story. I said, Brittany, this is what happened. You know, I've always had this in common and everything. And she probably thought inside, you know, to some degree, she was like 15, she just turned 15. Probably thought I was a little crazy, but she said, okay, Dad, okay. She believed, she was with me, you know? So there was no divorce. I said, no, I called up my attorney, I said, no, I don't want it. I didn't know, he thought it was nuts. No, I don't want it, sorry, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, well, you're still gonna pay me, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll still pay you. I'm just, I don't think you ever heard that before. No, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's weird. And I, I called Sandra and she thought, I said, you know, make mad, but I'm just not going to do it. Do what God says, no. So, but because I said yes to God's peace, so natural, things started to happen behind the scenes. You know, God's moving. That's what he does in our life. If you say yes to the decision he shows you, supernatural things start happening. So I just stayed in peace. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. I don't know how it's going to work. No one's in it. Brittany's there with me. But other than that, everyone else, I didn't really tell anybody. So, about a month and a half later, that wasn't bad enough, the Lord said, awesome, you're listening. Okay, now I want you to go to Colorado to catch Bible calls. Whoa, okay. So I kind of listened, I had peace, but you know, I had other people in my life that were saying, oh no, you can't do that, that's not right. No, because God, I wouldn't be God, he wouldn't tell me to go and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, well yeah, maybe, now I'm all confused, right? So I'm like, I'm looking into the, the local campuses and doing that and, I'm like, okay, no, I thought I was in peace. Now I'm not in peace. Right now I'm like, oh, like, oh, what am I doing? What is it? So, but the Lord is faithful. When you start to listen, he'll bring you back. And I had this beautiful encounter, not like the last one where it was just an audible voice and I was like, you know, the Lord looked at me. It was no more than three feet away. And he looked at me and I was just riveted looking at him. He said, you know, we're going to meet like this when we meet in eternity. I'm going to ask you, you remember when I told you to go to Colorado? Yes. Yes. Peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peace. Okay. I don't know how this is going to work out, but okay. I believed. So another month, I'm just believing. Just believing. I'm like, I'm going to take my kids to the breakers. I think it was the breakers, you know, I had the Christmas stuff down in the mansions in Newport. And you know, it's all set up for Christmas. It's like close to Christmas. So I call, and lo and behold, Sandra picks up. We very rarely talked. I said, you know, I'm just thinking I'm going to take the kids down to the breakers for this event for Christmas. Do you want to come? I said. She said, yeah. We hung up. Like, what? <laughs> this was a God thing. We talked about this later. Why, why did I do that? <laughs> but so we got, I picked them up, and there was peace. There was so much peace. I'm like, this is weird. But it was just peace. We walked through, and you know, they put their headphones on you. They tell you things you don't even want to know. But you walk around, <laughs> and you're like, okay, can I just look? But so, you know, 
But we get into the gift shop, where they always dump you in the gift shop, because they want you to buy things. So we're there, <laughs> and I said, you know, I've got to tell you, the Lord's told me to go to Colorado, Ohio College. She said, you're crazy. And that was it. That was the answer that comes to So, but I knew in my heart, I had the peace, and that God was teaching me about this, that if you have peace, it's me. So... I just believed supernatural things started to happen. I had to go away again, kind of fast forward. I was still training in the military, and supernatural stuff happened. God spoke through the kids, spoke to Sandra, and he brought it all together. We're going, as you all know, we went. So we're off to Colorado. Of course, we're not living together, so I have to get my stuff from one place, right? She gets her stuff, as crazy as it is. We're loading the truck from one house to the other house. I take Nick with me, you know, we, we get my stuff from my mother, she's living at her mother's. So, so we bring the stuff, and you know, we pack up my pickup truck, and we're driving back, and Nikki looks at me and he says, thanks, Dad. I said, what do you mean? He said, if you didn't fight for me, fight for us, we wouldn't be a family again. And it just broke my heart at that point, because then I started to realize that everything that we do ripples on. Everything that we do, when we're in obedience, it, rip, it goes on. It's beyond just what we're going through. When you're obedient and you listen and you're living inside of God's will, things happen that you may not really know. But he was so, you know, I think he knows the Lord. He's, he was able just to express it like that. We started to realize that, wow, man, this is beyond us. So we go to Colorado. You know, we drive the 2,000 miles. We're like, we're adventurers. We're going out there. And so we're there, we get all there and everything, and about two and a half months later, we lose all our money. Because I was going on the GI Bill. They were paying for stuff, you know, half of the house and part of the tuition. That was the whole plan. But we knew, even though this happens, and, it, you know, there was an audit that was done, which is always not done, but anyway, they can actually take away a GI Bill, believe it or not. So we got together, the four of us. We held hands and we said, there's no plan B. God said, go, we're here. We stood on that decision. When you stand on the decision, when God says, I want you to do, and he gives you peace, once you move and you agree, heaven takes over. Supernatural stuff is not happening. Ah, I can't explain it all. Supernatural stuff. Sandra gets a job with the CEO. I mean, we just got there. She gets a job with the CEO of the whole ministry. She's the executive assistant. And then, so we end up going to go to school for free. All kinds of blessings happening. Now, we fought some stuff. I'm not going to There's some dramatic stuff that we went through. The enemy tries to get you, but we stayed in peace. We went through all kinds of craziness. You know, we're almost killed on the highway, battling all kinds of crazy attacks, both attacks. I was almost killed on my way at Boston going to. It's a long story, but the thing about it is, we made a decision that we're going to listen to that peace and we're not going to move. So praise God, all things were completed. So we spent the two years and we, I graduated and we we're like, the family was united. I saw things happen and everybody changed. Even hair grew. Like Nicola, you know, <laughs> supernatural stuff. Brittany became even more powerful in the spirit, you know, just ministering to people like, you know, three times our age. And Nikki, you know, high jumps, all kinds of crazy stuff. It was just blessing upon blessing upon blessing. So we graduated and we're like, okay, now what happens? Now what do we do? That's great. Sandra at the time, she got this from the Lord that we're supposed to come back to New England. I was weak. I didn't know. I was praying, okay, what are we supposed to do? I was ready to go to Africa, you know, <laughs> something super adventurous. You know, let's just go. <laughs> Whatever, I don't care, let's just go, we're in this, you know. But she felt, you know, her parents weren't feeling too good, they were kind of sick, and her heart was like, oh, she, you know, she wanted to come back. And so I had a really good friend of mine who used to carpool from the college down to Colorado Springs and back every day. And he said to me once, we were talking about this, he said, oh, you know what, if you just do it to honor, I think he said, I think God's saying, if you just do it to honor Sandra, because she wants to take care of her parents, I think God would be good with that. So I prayed about it, peace. 
peace. Didn't make sense, because I wanted to, I mean, I, didn't, I wanted to make sure, right? But he gave me peace about doing that. So I said, Sam, well, God's giving me peace. Even if it's just the appearance, we're going, let's do it. Once you agree with the direction that God tells you, supernatural things, supernatural. And then once you get, oh, by the way, I want you to take practical covenant. And by the way, you're going to be a pastor. I'm like, I thought I was just going to teach us some, you know, people in India, right? Africa, whatever. Right? And then he kept confirming it. Okay. And then we had to say yes. But he just laid out this whole thing. In fact, we want you to go get a church, find a church. Back in Rhode Island. So, you know, the final phase, of course, is this place, which is totally supernatural. So the Lord said, okay. I want us to go back, so we decided we're going to come back. We looked, we went to Newport. This we took two weeks in 2016. We went to Newport. We looked at all these places. We went to Bristol. We looked at all these places. We're like, wow, this is good. This is historic. This is good. God said, no peace, no. This one, all of you, no peace, no. Mm -hmm. And then so we went back. We're like, okay, well, we still believe God said to go back. And Sandra, lo and behold, finds this place online. We look at it. Online and the Lord says, Go, go look. Because that's part of sowing too. Sometimes we don't believe or understand. Sowing sometimes is going to do something. Because that's what God told you. I want you to go there, we'll go. If he tells you to go. So we came here, we flew into Boston, Sandra and I, on a weekend, around Halloween. And so we come here directly, you know, and we get here early and we go around the back onto one of the big rocks overlooking the river the pond. And we just pray. Uh, is this it or not? He said, this is it. Peace, both of us. Are you getting that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. We've learned by that point. Okay. It's a done deal. So we put it up on the refrigerator. We told the kids, this is it. God said yes. They had peace. We put it up. That's it. That was it. Totally and completely impossible. Other than we said, okay, it's God's plan. Long story short, we didn't have any money at that point for this place. We didn't have any way to do it, except we believed with the peace that God will make it happen. So since we said yes, again, supernatural, behind the scenes, crazy stuff, you just know it's God because you just can't make this stuff up. We raised all kinds of money just because God bought it. We had favor with the, uh, the, the sellers. All kinds of stuff happened. We're here today. And sometimes, you know, we'll say, man, this place is supposed to be filled. But God's bringing the right people. And the reason that we don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. We're still human, right? All of us. And we look at things, sometimes we'll say, oh, what is going on? But we have peace still. Because we're like, Lord, you know, we're passing all these funds. We're praying. He says, peace. Maintain, of course. So the, I just want to share this with you. It's just, it's, it's so important. This isn't just our testimony. This is the way God has things work. You know, he set it up this way for all of us to ask. And if it's peace, you say yes. And then if you take a step in that direction, Heaven, moons, angels, supernatural, people come out of the woodwork to help you. Things just happen when you participate in the realm of glory, when you say yes to that. But if you do not have peace, I've been there, and I've reaped the destruction. Do not go there. Do not. Just say no. And I get it. I've talked myself into it. Yeah, but this is great. I'm going to make this my money, and this is great. My mother said this. And, you know, Uncle Fred, which I don't have, but you know, he was good at that and all this nonsense that we put it in and it sounds good. But at the end of the day, you know, I've got, I believe I'm going to leave to 100, so that's why I say 50 is I did it wrong. It's going to live to 120. I remember that, right? Sometimes I say in 100 years, we're all going to be in heaven. He goes, no, I'm only 17. I love. So now in 103 years, we're all going to be in heaven. And we're going to know the truth. But it's not going to change from the word of God. It's the same. God wants us to get this today. Oh, yes, we have dominion. We do. God's not going to change that. He's not going to change gravity. He's not going to change anything that he set up. 
So we know we have dominion, we know we have authority, now we have direction. This, I think, is one of the keys for us not only living in peace completely, but exercising the peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. you know? And God said, of course, guard your hearts above all things, because out of it come the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got to protect what you let in. You have to. Oh, but you don't know my situation. This is really terrible. This is, yeah, I know. I've been through it. Not your exact thing, but I, we've all been through it. Mm -hmm. But we want to get through it to a place where you can say, wow, I want to get God's plan on this. Mm -hmm. I want to work it God's way. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, we just love you so much. We thank you that you never give up on us, that you continuously show us ways, Lord, that we can go from glory to glory. So we just pray today that this word about peace, that letting your peace to guide all our decisions, letting your peace rule our lives. Oh, we get this in our hearts today. Oh, we seal it by faith in our hearts. Hallelujah. And we just say, Lord, let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen.